Hello, in this video I'd like to share with you my experience of taking Irene Lyne's Smart Body, Smart Mind, how it helped me in my recovery from scapegoat child abuse and I thought it might be helpful to you if you are also considering taking it. So I took Irene Lyne's Smart Body, Smart Mind course back in 2017 um, and that seems like an absolute lifetime ago to me. I'm recording this video September 2023 so it's six and a half years ago um, and at that time back in 2017 I was searching around for information on the stress and trauma in the body and the fight for light freeze response and how that impacts the body. So I came across Irene's teachings and of course she has such a huge volume of information online on her social media on her YouTube and that was super helpful for me. I think I started with her three-part trauma education training series so that was really really helpful to have the visual on the video to get the cognitive understanding to start learning about the nervous system and how trauma gets trapped uh, for humans and coming down off the fight flight freeze or not being able to come down off it so understanding what that is all about from there I took her 21 day course and I went through all the exercises with that. Um, I think that was kind of a self-study and from there I decided to do her flagship program, the Smart Body, Smart Mind. So that was around March, I think, 2017. So it was absolutely amazing. I loved doing Smart Body, Smart Mind. I'm a big, avid lifetime learner. I've taken so many online courses in the last 10 years. Um, I'm very conscientious as a learner. I remember having my printer and printing out all the worksheets for all the weeks as we went along. Week one to week 12 of the course, I remember ticking off, doing what we needed to do each day as was suggested, went to all the Q&A calls and really absorbed all the information. And I did actually also at the time work one-to-one -one with somebody from Irene's team, um, a somatic experiencing practitioner, that was really helpful as well. So for me, it was all about getting back in tune with the body from the complex childhood trauma that I experienced and was dealing with. What I discovered is that the body numbs out, um, there's a disconnect from our body. I, I do feel like my gut intuition was offline. It was hard for me to tune in and know uh, what was right for me or making decisions was always quite laborious. Um, so over the course of taking the course it really did get my gut intuition back online um, and how it tied in for me being the family scapegoat so in August September of 2017 I did a visit back to Ireland to visit my family of origin and I knew I knew at the time uh, you know it was pretty precarious situation. I knew I was being abused, but I was still very much trauma bonded with the family members and the thoughts of going no contact was extremely daunting. I didn't have anybody who understood about scapegoat child abuse. I didn't have any mentors. I didn't have any coaches who really understood what was going on, the complexity of it, the seriousness of it. 
and how it was really detrimental to me to be in that situation around very unsafe people who were not able to change how they were interacting with me. It was really hurting me, but they were not able to interact with me in any other way. So then the ball was in my court. Okay, what do I do? I'm an adult in my 40s at that stage. Um, I really have to start advocating for myself. Nobody's going to come in and help me with this. So I really remember that visit in particular because it, it's the last time I was in Ireland. Um, I remember there was some really severe psychological attacks taking place. I was very aware of what was happening. And of course, as a scapegoat child, you don't have a voice because if you express and uh, communicate to the people that, you know, what you're doing there, what you're saying is, I don't like it, it's really hurtful. Um, I feel really humiliated by your words and actions. They don't compute that. Um, there's a real lack of empathy. So from a stance of healthy human interactions, it's a non-goer. Um, it's just a different world that we're in. So after that visit, I came back to my home in the UK. And what happened was that I got very ill for a full three weeks. Um, and what I understand in hindsight with that was that my nervous system was beginning to, number one, come back online, and number two, was beginning to send me very strong messages. It's like my body was saying to me, you're in a really toxic situation. This is not good for you. You're getting attacked and it's compromising your immune system. And I was struggling with the going no contact to keep myself safe and to protect my mental health, my emotional health and my physical well-being. I know in, in hindsight and I know I couldn't really get there with my mental thinking and rationalizing it and computing the vastness and the seriousness of the of the situation. So my body definitely helped me out in that way. My body sent very strong messages that if you hang around with these people, these perpetrators, these abusers for very much longer, you're going to get even more sick. And there was other times in the past after visits when I had gone over to see family of origin that I was coming back, I was getting ill. Um, so my body was communicating with me and I do like the name of that book, When the Body Says No. Um, and the other book, the body keeps the score. So my body was keeping the score. My body and nervous system was saying, oh, look, Mary is understanding about the nervous system. Mary is getting this education on board. Mary kind of knows about us now. So I think it's time to ramp up um, and let her know the real impact of what is happening physically so that she can really get the message. We need to drive this home now. This is critical. This is crunch time. Um, so after that visit f to, in, to Ireland for me, I started mentally preparing for seriously going no contact, uh, which I was able to do a couple of months later in early 2018. So Back to Irene's smart body, smart mind. It was very, very pivotal for me to have that education 
and to understand about my nervous system, to understand what was happening to me physically and to have some tools to help my nervous system and to have some tools to help me with the fight, flight, freeze response. So that was a big part for me and I'm very grateful to that course which I continue to use. Um, I do have been using it for the past six and a half years. Um, and back to the back to the course and some of the exercises and how it helped me it's guided uh, there's a lot of guided exercises that Irene walks you through so for example there's the orientation exercise um there is the gentle head rolling exercise uh, some of these exercises you do on yoga mat on the floor there's potent posture which is very very interesting um, and then there's the kidney adrenal exercises so you're just learning very holistically about the body for me it was definitely getting a connection back to my body because as the family scapegoat it was so terrifying to be in that environment, to be ridiculed, shamed, bullied, to have the ringleader in the family turn people against me. Um, very terrifying. So it wasn't safe for me to feel. I had to turn off my feeling sensation in order to survive my childhood and into adulthood. So my body was very habituated into numbing out. My body was very habituated into dissociating. Let's not feel this pain. This pain is unbearable. This pain is excruciating. You're not going to survive if you allow yourself feel the pain because that puts you in touch with the truth of the situation. And there is not a soul on the planet who is going to help you with your situation. It just was wasn't available there was nobody that was going to help me as a child or a teenager to get out of that situation of course there was the big cover up of what was taking place absolute huge taboo and just they would have pathologized me around that uh, so it was just a case of surviving and then with the help of Irene's course, it was getting my physiology back online, my gut intuition back online so I can make decisions for myself. So I can start to distinguish between safety and non-safety. And then from there, if I know what situations and what people are safe and what situations and people are not safe, that really helps me um, with my decision making and my life, which is essential. So with the exercises, some of the things that came up for me, because of course, it's very different to talking therapy or working through uh, what happened to you situations. It's, it's none of that. It's all physical and your biology uh, it's really really interesting uh, so with some of the exercises and I shared this with Irene when I did an interview with her is that it, it can bring up things so Irene describes it as the fight and the flight response is suppressed and then it means that you're in a freeze response so to come out of the freeze response there's a lot of things kind of hiding underneath that. So that comes up as you start to do the exercises, that comes up and out. Almost like a purging, a purging of the trauma and what's stuck in the body, what's stuck in the cells, all the trauma that's in the joints and all of that. So yeah, what happened to me was even with the very first orientation exercise, 
after a couple of minutes, oh, I there was all this grief coming up. Um, and I just had to work through that. I knew it was just allowing my body to do the process of releasing the trauma. Also, on some occasions, sometimes I'd be lying on my yoga mat, doing some of the breathing exercises. And sometimes you it would just be very funny or <laughs> it would just start laughing. And I just think that's kind of similar to crying in terms of the body is just releasing emotions. Um, and I sure shared this also with Irene when I was doing the movement exercises with Elia. And he does always say at the beginning, you know, Make sure you're hydrated, have a glass of water. And after a few minutes of doing those exercises, I don't know what was happening in my body, but I was so thirsty and just drinking loads of water. So it's really connecting with the body, understanding the body, listening to the body. If we're not listening to the body, we're disconnected with ourselves. So from doing the exercises, I was definitely reconnecting with the body. And then my body was feeling safer because I feel like my body was saying, oh, Mary's, you know, Mary's looking after us. Mary's tuning in. Let's, it, it looks like it's safe to release this piece of trauma now. And then I was very consistent with the exercises and um, going through the course. So my body was coming into more and more levels of safety. So we won't be able to release trauma unless we feel safe. Um, and another, oh, another thing that I found the course very helpful for as well was, say, for example, um, if I was out on a, at an event uh, and for me, as the family scapegoat, I did need to do a lot of healing around being in a room full of people because my nervous system tended to have like this kind of red light, you know, you're in a room from a pe you're in a room full of people so like danger 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 you can be attacked by anybody uh there's a danger that there's some dangerous people here they're going to attack you and not only are they going to attack you but they're going to turn the whole group against you like this gang mobbing so that was what my physiology and nervous system was afraid of because that did happen when I was a child. It was true. It did happen. But uh, my body was saying that, you know, this could definitely happen again. You're not safe. So when I would come back from being around people, when I would come back to my home, my nervous system would be very, very activated and maybe adrenalized or just um, very activated is the word I'll use and before I definitely wouldn't notice that so much and I used to have a habit of coming back from work events and my the first thing I would do because I did have a habit of emotional eating. Um, so I go to the kitchen and eat toast uh, with peanut butter and jam. Um, and what happened to me with, and oh, I did, used to do all sorts of other emotional eating, not a huge issue, but just extremely habitual for me and something I learned as a child to do to numb out the very difficult feelings that I had no help as a child to deal with and there was a lot of emotional violence when I was growing up so that was a coping strategy that I had and it just kept going all through my adult life. Not a huge issue but I don't like to be consuming 
food to numb out difficult emotions. I'd rather be consuming food because my body needs calories and it needs energy. Uh, so that was one of the other things that I noticed. So I come back from an event and I would be able to the benefit of Irene's course and tune, being able to tune in and listen to my body, I'd be able to sense that, like the impulse, the impulse to go to the kitchen <laughs> and soothe my self-soothing method or just getting away from whatever anxiety or difficult, really uncomfortable emotions that I was feeling that I just wanted to numb out from. So I was able to pause and say, oh, okay, I can see, I can see this impulse to eat food. I really, really want to eat food now. Um, and then I was there, wait a minute, I'm not hungry. I had my dinner before I went out. I don't, my body does not need food. Um, and then it was just like such a debate, like, will I eat something or will I be able to pause and not do this impulse, not kind of firefight my emotions, quenching, using food to quench the flames of really difficult emotions. So I remember a couple of times then what I would do is I would come back from my work events uh, and I would go straight to Smart Body, Smart Mind, use the exercises and would be quite surprised, would be quite amazed that, oh my God, wow, my nervous system has been so activated. My nervous system is ramped up a lot. Um, and then I do the exercises, which would help calm and release um, the activation, the adrenaline, and that was a game changer, I would say. That was really, really helpful. Um, and just getting the discipline with that, sometimes the impulse would run away and get the better of me. And then other times I would be able to pause and stop, but I got better at it over time. And that's still a technique, not a technique, that's still something I use today. Like I'm very aware of if I have that impulse to use food as a coping mechanism for some difficult emotions that I'm not prepared to look at. And I know the healthy way um, and the way to heal is to pause and to be with the difficulty, the excruciating difficulty of whatever may come up there because if I don't allow it to come up and release it in a healthy way and by doing smart body smart mind I understood all the layers of what that was about well then it's just going to continually happen and I'm just going to keep doing that and using things or food or substances to escape from challenging emotions and then what I learned from that is okay these are just really difficult emotions. I can I can deal with it. It's not as bad. It's not as life threatening as it was when I was a child. And what I understood with that was these are almost like trapped emotions, feelings that I was not able to feel as a child because, as I say, there's no help. I'm not going to get anywhere. No point in feeling those things as a child. And it's terrifying so they're still there in the body is what I learned um, and to be able to process that in my recovery journey as an adult is just amazing to be able to do it and to be able to do it with an online course because I'm in the UK Irene's in British Columbia and the people in the course are from all over the world so absolutely amazing very very grateful to have that course. So um, that probably covers what I wanted to share about it. Um, I do still log in to the course, use it every week, as I say, 
The other benefit that I found from it is sometimes I call it my sleeping tablet. So at night time, again, if I'm a bit adrenalized, a bit activated, and I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be hard for me to get to sleep, I will log in to Smart Body, Smart Mind, do probably, I'll probably pick the adrenal, uh, dropping the adrenals or the kidney adrenal awareness exercise. Um, that's usually my go-to one that I'll do. I'll lie down on my yoga mat. I'll do it. Sometimes I'll have a bit of resistance. Oh, I don't want to do this, but I know it helps me. Or if I wake up in the morning and I've had kind of broken sleep or not really a good night's sleep, First thing I'll think about is, did you do your smart body, smart mind exercise last night? No, you didn't. Well, you should have because I would have had a much better night's sleep. So absolutely love it for getting a really good night's sleep because your parasympathetic uh, nervous system is online and your body, well, my body was feeling, oh, it's it's safe for me to go to sleep. There's not any threats. Uh, it's different. I'm not in my childhood home, so there's not any threats and it's safe for me to go to sleep. And of course, sleep is so important when we're healing, when we're in recovery and to be able to live our day to day life. So that's everything there. Um, if you do have any questions about Irene's smart body, smart mind, let me know. And I will put links below this video to Irene's course. Um, and that probably covers everything. So thank you very much and wishing you the very best in your recovery journey.